What up, people? Please give this video a like if you like the video. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the icon in the bottom right-hand corner of this video, and then make sure that you turn your push notifications on so you can receive updates every time we post a video here on the Vaniverse Gaming Channel. Okay, people, Vaniverse from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel here with another guide on Conan Exiles. In today's video, we are going to cover the map room and how to make it. Uh, if you check out my journey guide number six on chapter seven of the journey, you will see where we went to the unnamed city in order to talk to the cartographer in order to unlock the map room. We'll show you this. Just check out that video. But right here is the archives. It's in the unnamed city. And when you go into those archives, you'll meet the cartographer. And once you do, you will have the ability to create a map room here on your bar. So now to make a map room, you're going to need several ingredients. You're going to need alchemical base. You're going to need 50 crystal, 35 iron reinforcement, and 200 corrupted stones. So we already know where to get the crystal and the iron reinforcements. So let's talk about the alchemical base and the corrupted stone. So first things first, both the alchemical base and the corrupted stone are going to be made on your fireball cauldron right here and right here. And so you will see that to make corrupted stone, you're going to need ichor, you're going to need stone, and you're going to need demon blood. So you're going to need 400 of this, and you're going to need 200 of both of these. Now, we already know where we're going to get ichor is, I would say, have about 10 fish traps. Make sure to get the, te the unappetizing fish, put it into your campfire, and then once you cook him, you will actually create ichor. If you have 10 traps... I would say about a hundred of them are gonna be um, the unappetizing fish. You probably get about a hundred per trap. And so if you have 10 traps, a hundred times 10, that's a thousand um, ichor that you can get just by doing it that way. So now the demon blood. So there's been several episodes in both my journey guide and, bo and my newbie, new player's guide episode 10 where I show where to get demon blood. So I have jumped around to all these places and from when it just comes to ease of getting it, not based on the quantity, but just the ease of getting it, I still think that going over here to the sand swept ruins is by far the easiest place to get demon blood in a higher quantity. You can kill imps, you can kill the uh, shalebacks or the kappas if you want to call them in the cave, where a lot of people have pointed out in the comments, but they're just really hard to kill compared to the amount you get. You can kill the Barrow King, which gives you a ton of demon blood, but they're also changing his mechanics. Right now he's broken where you can just like stand up on his hip, and as long as you stand up on his hip, he doesn't do any damage to you, but they're going to be changing that soon, hopefully. Um, and then those rock guys that I've showed in episode 10 of my new player's guide, and also I believe I showed it in a previous episode of The Journey, uh, some guys have pointed out that they're kind of hard to kill for especially low levels. So when it comes to just ease to kill and the amount of demon blood, these things seem to be the best. So there's there's about five of them around here. Um, once you go, and the other thing I didn't mention in my other videos that other people have commented on is I'm pretty sure Skinny Knife is probably the best way to get demon blood. I'm not 100% confident on this, but just based on some experiments, I think that's where we are. So you can see, I only have steel daggers right now. Whoa. Whoa. And so with steel daggers, you can see that I pretty much wrecked him with just steel daggers. So he's a lot easier to kill than some of the other ones. And if I hit him right there, I just got eight demon blood from doing that. So when it just comes from the amount of demon blood that you have the opportunity to get, plus the fact that it's they're not that hard to kill. I still suggest that if you're going to farm demon blood, these are probably the best places to do it. Probably not when you're half health, and probably not when you're fighting like 16 things. But you get the drift. And so, and then once you kill him, I still think that the skinny knife seems to be the best. So I just got four demon blood there. And I didn't get any demon blood there. but So I killed three of them, and I think I ended up with about 12 demon blood. So you do need 200, so it's going to take you a little bit uh, if you do it this way. But the other locations to get demon blood I've pointed out before are going to be up here in the volcano, going up through here, killing little rock guys, 
Um, if you come over here, this is the Barrow King. If you can kill him, he drops a ton of demon blood. Um, there's a couple of those little rock guys in the mountain areas here. I think there's two of them. Uh, there's this shaleback cave here that you have a chance of getting demon blood from. There's also imps. And then also in the unnamed city, there's some bat guys you can get demon blood from. Uh, walking around this sinkhole, there are some other creatures that give demon blood. And then the dragons in the unnamed city can give you demon blood. So it just depends on what level you are, what gear you have. I still think that over here in this sand swept ruin is by far the best. So once you, let's make it daytime here. Once you gather that, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need alchemical base. So in order to get alchemical base, you're going to need three ingredients for that. You're going to need ichor, which we already know how to get that through the fish traps. You're going to need gold dust, and you are going to need silver dust. So similar to the demon blood, I've showed in other videos where to get silver and gold dust. And I just wanted to show you guys, just based on my findings, what seems to be the best way to get gold and silver. These are my favorite spots to get it. So, you know, these aren't going to be... You know, the best spots are just ones I like. So in a previous video I showed going up here through the volcano as well, there's this stuff called obsidian, and you have a chance of getting gold ore from it. A lot of people mention that getting up to the volcano is not something to do. Um, it's kind of hard. So the two places to farm silver, you're going to have one place right here, which is in between the rhino ridge and the jawbone. So I'll show you that. So we'll do silver first. Silver is much easier to get than gold when it comes to harvesting it from nodes. The silver node areas are fairly easy to get to and there's not too much problem. So when you come here, you're gonna see this abandoned cave. So if you wait for it to load here and you open up your map. So here's where we are. We're on this little path. And right here you'll see, here's your silver nodes. Right there's one. So they look kind of like iron, but they got like these little blue specks instead. I don't have any of my farming tools on me, but basically if you were to hit these, well here, let's just make one quick so you guys can see this because you want to know, um, we want to know what you get from this to kind of show you. So where's my steel pick? I'll just get a hardened one, whatever. So if you hit it, you see that I got four silver stone. So you can see that you have a chance of getting silver stone and regular stone from these. So it just depends on what tool you use, how much you're going to get. Okay. So the next place where you can actually farm silver ore is right here in this place called the Descent of the, the, the Goon. Right in here, there is a waterway that will take you into here. You can also climb up over the top. And then red, right dead smack in the middle where you see this water is where the silver ore is. So we're going to show you this. So there are, this is an NPC camp, so if you um, spawn in here, you're going to have to fight some creatures or some bad guys. So let me make sure that this loads in because I don't think I'm in my admin mode right now. And I just want to make sure, okay, I'm in. Where are they? There they go. And there's, I think, two of them down here. Yep, here he is. He's dead, and then we'll kill this guy here. So, not too difficult, and then right here you have your same thing. It looks just like the other ones. You hit him right here, boom, and you get your silver ore. Now, there's one other location that I want to show you guys that is really good for farming both silver and gold, and it's in, it's in this Bay of Hawks. So I'm going to show you this. I'm going to pour it over here. And so there are chests in different camps that in these chests you have a chance of getting gold and silver um, bars and you also have a chance of getting coins. And so these chests are a very good way um, to get gold and silver without having to harvest it from an actual like node. So you can see I'm doing a pretty good job on this guy with just steel versus um, if I were to try and do maybe iron, and I also have some points in strength, so he's going to die pretty quick. These are also really good for the volatile glands, which I've showed, but that's not what we're here for. What we are here for are the chests. There are two chests 
one right here. And then there's one right over there in the water, if you can see my pointer. That's the two right here. When you click on them, you have a chance of getting gold and silver coins and gold and silver bars. This is a much easier way to get gold, in my opinion. Um, a lot of people pointed this out, and I definitely agree with them. Going up to the volcano is much harder than this. So you come over here, you find the other chest, and now you take those. So right now I have 11 gold and 8 silver coins. And when you melt those down, you get two per each. So technically I'm at 22 and 16. And so the last chest is right here. So right in this area alone, there are three chests. And I just was able to get 19 gold coins, eight silver coins, and a silver bar. So these are my favorite locations to farm what you're gonna need. These same chests spawn in the unnamed city. You can kind of run through the unnamed city and find these chests. Uh, I don't know other locations. I, I'm pretty sure that there's some other sunken treasures like over in this area here, maybe in this area. I'm not 100% sure. But you don't really need to go to those. These, I think these chests spawn like eh, every 30 minutes or so. And so just keep looting these things, and then eventually you'll have plenty to get your, uh, your map room. All right, so once you have everything for your map room, we'll come back here. And we'll show you how the coin thing works and the bars and kind of what to do here. So some people said that you need to make a coin mold so that you get more for bang for your buck. I don't think that is the case, but we're going to show you what that is and kind of how we can get the most dust because we need the dust. We don't actually need the coins and we don't actually need the bars. We need the dust. So if we wait for this thing to spawn in... We'll click on here, and you'll see I need two silver dust and one gold. So if I have 75 alchemical base, that's 150 silver and 75 gold, and then the ichor, we know where to get that. So if you go to your feats, you will see that there is this thing called a coin mold right here at level 19. This allows you to take a bar and turn it into coins. So you make it on your blacksmith bench right here. It requires 15 iron. And then what you do is you come over here to your forge. You throw it in just like the flask mold. And then if you have a bar, you just put it in here. You put in your fuel, which I don't have any fuel on me right now because I'm silly. Because I am well prepared always for doing videos. Let's just use this five coal. That'll work. Put your fuel in, and you'll see that as soon as I click on that, it's going to give me five silver coins. So if I take those five silver coins and put it in a grinder, it's going to give me ten total dust. Now, for someone's theory, right here, I have some silver stone. We're going to put that in here. And we're at, okay, so wait, stop. Take the coin mode out. Take the coin mode out. Okay. All right, so let's show you this so if i put it in and turn it into coin i get five if i were to put these coins into here i would get two each okay so if i were to change it into a coin and then put it in the grinder i get 10 total now if i just put the steel bar in the grinder how many do i get do i get 10 or do i get less let's see so i get 10 so it sh shouldn't matter if you turn them into coins or not if you put a bar in here you're going to get 10 if you put them in a coin mold you're going to get five and then you're going to put it here and get 10 so it's a waste of time to do the coin mold i just wanted to confirm that because some people said that you should convert them to coins from bars but that's not necessarily the case all right so once you get everything put in here and you get it all ground up into dust then you're going to take this dust and then you're going to make your alchemical base okay so I already have some stuff made. We're going to show you this. So we needed 150 of this. We got 100 of those. And then we got 200 of that. So once you have your uh, 150 ichor, 150 silver, and 75 gold, you basically are just going to come right over here. And you're going to put it all in your furnace. I mean in your uh, fireball cauldron. And voila. So... Once you make your demon, your uh, demon stone, or your, your uh, 
what are they called? Corrupted stones and your alchemical base. Then you're going to actually make your map room. So my map room is right here. And the next thing you have to plan out when you're looking to make a map room is the size of it. So right here, I have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, an eight by eight uh, square base here. And this thing barely fits on this. So just to let you guys know that it is a big, big thing. So right there. And then what happens is, is that once you have your map room down, each one of these locations is a obelisk in the in the map, which I'll show you here in a second. If you have already been to that obelisk and you've already selected that obelisk and attuned to it, you will then be able to travel to it. If not, it'll say bracer not attuned. So you'll see that I am attuned to this one right here. So if I were to click on this, it's going to port me to that location. So that's how this works. It's a one-way port to the obelisks. You can't port back to this. The other key thing to know is that anybody can use this. So similar to elevators in this game, that anybody can use a map room. And this is a really good trick that if you place map rooms in areas that you want to go farm, so say you want to farm a lot of black ice, then you could place a map room up here and then use this map room to kind of get you closer to some other location since you can travel from a map room but not to a map room. So that's basically how it works and things you should consider. Now, I'm just going to real briefly, real quick, briefly show you guys the different obelisks and their locations so that you guys can see where they are on the map and know what they look like, but I'm not going to show you how to run to them. It's just going to take too much time, but this way you can at least have a guide. You can copy the map and so you know, okay, this is where I got to go to unlock these. So there are a total of, we can count them here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are a total of ten obelisks throughout the world, and they're usually positioned near a boss, like a dungeon, or something important. So let's look right here in the desert. So right down here in the desert, the first one is, is right above the dregs. So if I were to port right on top of the dregs here, it is right above the dregs entrance. So if you haven't checked it out yet, there's a guide I have on the dregs entrance and the dregs dungeon, but you'll see I am right dead smack on top of it. Like below where I am currently is the dregs dungeon. So way up on top here is the obelisk. You just run over to it and you click and you attune yourself to it. Boom, done. So that's that one. Now, sticking to the desert, if we go directly north, we will be in the unnamed city. This, you will see how to unlock this in the journey guide that I created that coincides with this video because we clicked this when we went to see the cartographer. The next one is actually out here in the desert. This is a special thing for the journey, which we'll get into another time. And the obelisk is out here. So if you look at it on the map, it's right on this, uh, this little mark right here we'll just teleport right to it and then we will show you this one okay and there is one more in the desert so three in the desert then there are two in the jungle and then there are three and two is five that doesn't my math isn't adding up there might be more in the desert so here we go we'll click on this and now we got this one so now we have unlocked the dregs we unlock this one and we unlock this one. So now we're going to go right over here. This is the sinkhole. The sinkhole is right here. And there's an obelisk right outside the sinkhole. So we're going to teleport there. And this will get us this one. Now, this is also another journey achievement that comes in a later chapter. Uh, I believe it is chapter 9. I think chapter 9 is when you have another journey achievement to unlock all all of the obelisks. So in this video, we will unlock all the obelisks and actually complete the journey step in chapter nine, which we'll cover when we get to that journey. Okay, so there we go, attuned. Now I do know that this journey step that, you know, find all the giant obelisks is I think broken still, but I believe on the test server, they're gonna be fixing that. All right, so the next one is if we were to go due east, here's the Forge City of Zelha, here's uh, the Pagoda of Boundless Lust, and right here on Dagoon's Eye, this is where the obelisk is located. So again, it's right next to the 
wonderful little city of Zala or whatever it is so that you can uh, go to the Witch Queen dungeon. So pretty much they're all located within a short distance from a dungeon, which I believe is how it was designed to be. All right, so we attune to that one. And we can get out of here before it even loads. Okay, so now we have this one. There's another one in the jungle. This is the passage. This actually takes you, I believe if you go through it, you can actually go somewhere up there, but we'll get into that later. And you'll see these two little stone structures here. And we'll just port to this one. And here is this one. So I believe that's one, two, three, four, five, six so far. Is that right? Is my math correct? All right. So we got that one. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So the next one we're going to spawn to is way over here in the Mounds of the Dead. If you look, there's this little island by itself. It's right on here. And this is next to the Barrow King, which is another dungeon. So again, with the same theme of put a place you can port to next to one of the dungeon locations in the game. And get out of our map. We'll make it daylight so you guys can see. We'll wait for the loading screen. All right. So right here you can see we're on this little kind of mini island. And let's tune to this one. All right. So now the next one we're going to go to is right here. If you run across, this is called the Bridge of the Betrayer. When you run across it and you get to the the end of it, this will take you to the next one. So this is in front of the Black Keep dungeon where you fight the King Scourge and you get all the Silent Legion armor and all the cool stuff. So here it is. You just run right across the bridge and I'm right here. And then I click on this bad boy. All right, we got two left. Again, these are some of these are very difficult to get to, so this is not for you know beginners. If you are going to try and unlock all these, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some prep. We might even do some a playthrough on some of that stuff. But in this video, I just want to show you where they are. So the next one is going to be up here. This is actually the Frost Keep. The Frost Keep is another dungeon, and there's an obelisk right out in front of it that you can attune to, so you can port to the Frost Keep. It's kind of nice because they took out traveling with, with animals. You can't travel with, they're not going to have mounts anymore. And so it's kind of nice that they cut the travel time in half. All right. So the 10th and final obelisk is in the actual volcano. So this one is kind of a bear to get to. Um, there are several ways to get into the volcano. There's this path that I showed you multiple times. You can kind of go up through here and then you go over the bridge and then you go down here and then you weave around and then eventually get to this building right here. We're going to pour it right in front of it so you can see it. And then I'll also show you there's an exit that you can come in a different way. And so like right here, as soon as you come in, you see this big, this big building. It's at the end here. So if the um, system is working correctly, this should be the 10th and final giant obelisk. And this should give me the achievement that is in chapter 9 to unlock all of them. So let's see what happens here. Obelisk attuned. And as you can see, even though I tuned, I don't believe it gave me the journey update. And you can see that like right now I'm dying of heat stroke from being here. So let me just admin panel quick and put on God mode because this place is a nasty, nasty place. And I'll cover this place more in detail um, when I do my guide on how to beat the boss in the actual volcano. That'll be an in-depth guide on the volcano, what you need, you know, to survive, etc. But I wanted to show you this. This is an exit so you can kind of see how you can get into the volcano and get right to the obelisk. The issue with the volcano is you have to be like extremely cold and then you go to extremely hot. So you need like two sets of armor on to do it. So you can see right here, there's this little hole here. And this is an entrance way that takes you to right here. So you can just run right in. So now I'm extremely cold. So those are all 10 of the obelisks. But you'll notice that if I go down to chapter 9, that it did not give me the completion for it because it's still broken. So there you go. All right. 
so those are the obelisks. This is the map room guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope this guy shows you, this shows you guys how to make a map room, what ingredients you need, where to get them, how big it is, and then also where the different obelisks are throughout the map so that when you're ready to create your journey, you at least know where you're heading. And we'll kind of go with that. This is Vaniverse from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel. Thanks again for watching. Cheers and peace out.